What is going on, everyone? Thank you so much for coming back today. Thank you so much for... What is going on, everyone? Thank you so much what for coming back doing? today. I'm making a YouTube video. Yeah, I know, but I'm making... Hollywood literally does it all the time. What are you getting at? Do you mind? Go right ahead. What is going on, everyone? Thank you so much for coming back today. Thank you so much for just taking time every day just to click on the video. I truly, truly, uh, I say this every single video. It truly means the world to me that there are so many different YouTube videos out there for you to click on, but you decided to click on this one. Um, I appreciate it so much. Um, another way to help support me and support this channel is hitting the thumbs up button, hit the like button down below. Just helps YouTube with the algorithm. Um, if you're not a subscriber and you'd like to become one, hey, do it. It's absolutely free. Go ahead and click that subscribe button and then turn on the post notifications and select all. And then YouTube will send you a nice little notification whenever I upload a new video. Um, but let's get into today's video. I think I got a good one planned for you guys. I know that we've all seen this as far as um, it's kind of like a copycat movie will come out around almost the exact same, maybe a couple months uh, from another movie. And, you know, it's like Hollywood is making like the same exact movie with the same similar script and they would just throw them both out there. And it's absolutely crazy because they'll both be along the same lines of the same type of plot and like that. Uh, today, I want to talk about five um, copycat movies. And what I want to do is kind of give you my take on those and tell you which one you need to go with. But these movies, all these movies on this list today came out in the same exact year, which makes it a little bit more crazy whenever you think about it. Is um, But you'll see as, as far as the list goes on. Um, you know, I'm going to give you my takes on it and kind of tell you, you know, my point of view and which one I prefer over the other one. Um, but, you know, I highly recommend you go check these out for your own self, get your own opinion, because my opinion doesn't matter. But let's get into the list today. Um, so starting at number five, um, I have Olympus Has Fallen and White House Down. Um, you know, basically both these movies came out in 2013. 2013 was a bad year for our president. You know, on one side you have Jamie Foxx. Uh, President of the United States. On the other side, you have Aaron Eckhart. Um, both did a pretty good job as far as the role goals. Um, in Olympus Has Fallen, you have Gerard Butler. In White House Down, you have Channing Tatum. Um, not a super big fan of Channing Tatum in this role. I know what you guys are going to say. The, the ladies are going to be like, you just don't know Channing like I do. I get it. He needs to just stick to his like rom-coms and stuff like that. I, he's just not doing it for me in this movie. Um, both movies had kind of the similar same plot. Terrorists are coming after the, the president of the United States. Just so happens, you know, our heroes are there to save the day. Um, when it comes down to it, I feel like Olympus Has Fallen kind of takes the, the edge on this one, um, for me. And also, if, I think it kind of says a lot, too, that Olympus Has Fallen did get a sequel. Both movies are okay, but my check marks gotta go to Olympus Has Fallen. Number four on the list, I have Turner and Hooch. And then I have K-9. Um, both movies came out in 1993. I could also throw in Top Dog with Chuck Norris. We'll leave that for another time. Both of these movies are exactly what you think they are going to be. You know, um, a misfit dog kind of teams up with this kind of rogue detective trying to solve a crime. It is what it is. Both movies are, are, are really good in my opinion. But for me, it comes down to the actor's. Um, you know, the laughs, the family comedy that you can watch over and over again. I feel like Canine just doesn't have that watchability where you can just watch it over and over again. It is good for what it is. I'm not going to take anything away from that. But this is Tom Hanks at his best. This is Tom Hanks, you know, starting out his career. Um, you know, spoiler alert, it is, this movie did come out in 1993, so hopefully I'm not spoiling anything. Um, in both movies, the dog does take a bullet uh, for um, each of their... I guess you'd say owners or their partners. Um, Turner Hooch definitely shed more tears for me um, in that in that department. But so for me, hands down, I gotta go with Turner Hooch. Number three in the year 2011. So we have these two movies come out. These are pretty pretty much similar, the same exact movie. Just let's just replace the actors. 
But before Mia and Ashton were making apology videos for Danny Maston, they both played in the movie, um, movies in 2011. We have No Strings Attached, and we have Friends with Benefits. Both of these are the same exact movie, just basically, uh, you know, friends that don't want to get into a relationship. No, no. Um, but I'll sleep with you, but don't make it complicated, okay? I don't want a relationship with you. And, of course, it happens that I just can't live without you. Um, there's actually one line from No Strings Attached. It's, it cracks me up. It's supposed to be a serious part, but it just cracks me up every single time. Um, where Ashton is just like, if you come any closer, I'm not going to let you go. If you come any closer, I'm not letting you go. And that just makes me laugh so hard because it's so cheesy and, and just over the top. But um, as far as the actors and the likability, it's the same exact script. I mean, it's the same exact thing. Um, of course, they end up falling in love with each other. They can't live without each other. But for me, um, as far as likability... Um, I feel like Justin Timberlake and Mia Kunis in this, um, in this movie, bef definitely I can believe a little bit more, I guess you could say. I don't know. Um, and, of course, Friends Benefits has a flash mob, which I'm always a fan of. Surprisingly enough, too, both movies made $149.5 million at the box office. Like, almost the same exact. So if that tells you even more of how much this movie is the same. Two and one could go pretty much, I could flip-flop these any way I want. But I gotta give number two to the 2006. We had The Prestige, and then we have The Illusionist. Uh, the Illusionist has Edward Norton. Um, Prestige has Hugh Jackman, Christian Bale. You know, for what it was, you know, one movie, they do it for the art of illusion. Uh, for the art of magic. The other movie does it for the art of love. But for me, this is absolutely a no-brainer here. Um, Prestige takes the cake for me. It's Christopher Nolan at his best. Um, I have watched The Prestige several, several, several times. The Illusionist, I watched it maybe one other time after that. Just kind of make sure that I didn't like it. Um, it is an okay movie. It's not bad. But definitely for me, um, better cast in Prestige. A better twist ending that you, you will not see coming. But for me, 100% Prestige. Takes the cake. It is the better movie of the two. Trust me. I think everyone who has seen this movie and seen Illusionist would agree with me on that. Hopefully. Now, number one. So, number one for me, um, we have Deep Impact and we have Armageddon. Both of these movies came out in 1998. You know, right around the year of Y2K. Where we thought the world was going to end. And natural disasters were just in every film that we, we came around. Um, so, both of them have different plots, but along the same premise of an asteroid is about to hit the Earth and destroy all mankind. But before Elijah Will was walking up Mordor to drop that ring in there, he was actually like driving his dirt bike up this mountain to escape the flooding waters where this asteroid had hit. Now this asteroid was supposed to be the size of New York City. Um, they had sent a team of astronauts into space to blow up this astronaut, but just in case it didn't happen, they had a lottery system where they picked um, a million people to go inside these bunkers where they could live for two years um, and kind of repopulate the earth and just get things going again. But Elijah Wood is dating this girl and um, he is picked to go down to the tunnel. He His his name is drawn to go down. Um, so his girlfriend's name is not drawn. So the way to get her down there is he decides to get married to her. No one else can go with him. Um, her family can't go, just her. So, of course, um, she decides she's not going without her family. Um, um, the asteroid hits. Spoiler alert. So, um, it is a great movie. I'm not going to take anything away from this movie. I, I did enjoy this movie. And plus, too, you have Morgan Freeman as your president. But I think I could take the news of an asteroid's about to hit the Earth if it's delivered by Morgan Freeman. I think I'd be okay with that. Now, you on the other end, you have Armageddon. Same exact premise. An asteroid is about to hit the Earth. Uh, we got to send a team of astronauts up into space to destroy this uh, asteroid before it hits the Earth. Now, the only thing that, you know, I have against Armageddon is that, you know, you go and you find these guys who are drilling for oil, um, and you want to train them to be astronauts to send them in space. Would it not be a lot easier to train astronauts who already know how to do on a space station and everything like that? Wouldn't it just be easier to teach them how to drill? But no, no. Bruce Willis is the best at it. 
Bruce Willis is gonna hit that mark no matter what. Um, as far as as far as Armageddon goes for me, um, better cast: um, Bruce Willis, Michael Clark Duncan, um, Ben Affleck, Owen Wilson, Steve Buscemi, uh, Billy Bob Thornton, Liv Tyler. This the list is a plus plus list of actors and actresses in this movie, and also too. Armageddon produced the Aerosmith song, I Don't Want to Miss a Thing, which, when it comes on in the car, me and my wife, we both look at each other and go, dang, that's really good. This is going to be a good good moment. Um, it just, it lasts. It, it just sticks with us. Um, it is one of those movies that it is watchable. Deep Impact is as well. I mean, it's a good movie to watch over and over again. But for me, and, you know, based off the cast, the soundtrack, and the best use of animal crackers in a movie, I gotta go with Armageddon. But that's all I have for you guys today. That is my list. That is my five copycat Hollywood movies. Um, I'm definitely gonna do a part two of this because there's not only just five, there's a whole list of copycat movies. But um, I'm curious to hear from you guys. Did I get the uh, choices wrong today? Did I get the choices right? Let me down in the comments, guys. Which one of these favorites was your favorite copycat movie? Um, if you had any. But that's all I have for you guys today. On your way out, if you wouldn't mind hitting that thumbs up button, hitting the subscribe button, turn on the post notification, and select all. And then YouTube will send you a nice little notification. But that's all I have for you guys today. I love you. Mom, I love you. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks, guys.